Hello everybody, my name is Chase here. <gasps> yes! This is my favorite time of year by far. <gasps> I have to go play in the snow. I hate global warming. Fine, I'll watch a movie. Christmas movies have always been some of the crowning staples of this wonderful holiday. Ha, you wish. It doesn't matter who you are, there's always at least one movie you look forward to re-watching when the season tis jolly. It's not hard to see why, they have great music, happy themes, blood and guts. Wait a minute. Yeah, there seems to be this weird subgenre of horror that's just about Christmas. Probably the most well-known is Silent Night, Deadly Night, which caused an entire movement of moms with too much free time. But that's not the film we're looking at today. No, today we're looking at the 1997 horror film Jack Frost, because when I hear Christmas, I think Mutant Killer Snowman. Not to be confused with the Michael Keaton movie of the same name with the arguably scarier Snowman. This movie is sort of a cult classic. I say sort of because while it's pretty well-known in the horror scene, I don't think I've ever heard any anybody say they actually like it. But why could that be? Is it because of the shitty one-liners, the plot that's clearly a ripoff of Child's Play, or maybe the shitty snowman suit that's not even slightly scary? If you answered all of the above to that question, then congratulations! You're practically already watching the movie. This is Jack Frost. Our story begins with one of the most irritating narrations of all time that goes on for way too fucking long as two clearly grown adults pretend to be an uncle telling his niece about the notorious serial killer, Jack Frost. Jack would get up, eat something, then hurry off and kill someone. Cause that's what he did. He killed people. He'd stick knives in their faces and cut out their tummies <laughs> and stamp on their heads till their brains got all runny. Uncle Harry, I don't hey, think hey, this hey. is such a- Hey, 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 you wanted a story, you got a story. Uncle Henry has clearly had too much eggnog. The uncle then tells the girl that Jack Frost is currently being taken to be executed, but of course, this is a horror film, so the people taking him fucking suck at their jobs as one of them allows Jack to kill him by breaking his neck with his boot. Like, how did that even happen? But it doesn't matter anyways, the transport crashes into an oncoming truck, allowing Jack to escape and somehow get out of his shackles. But this is not an ordinary truck, it's a genetic research truck, which accidentally adds a secret ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. For some reason, this animation sequence reminds me of the Jetsons. Meet George Jetson! <laughs> While that's going on, we meet our main character, Sam, who is currently driving home with his wife discussing Jack Frost, as Sam is the cop who finally caught the stupidly named serial killer after he found them taking a leak in a bush and randomly decided to pull a gun on him without knowing who he is. That's right, Sheriff! You take a good long look at this face, cause the next time you see it, it's gonna tear your world apart! I'll find a way! Yeah, if you can't tell by now, this story sounds pretty damn similar to Child's Play. You know, with the whole serial killer possessing something that's usually associated with children and having said killer go after the cop who took him down. I would even say it goes a little too far into ripoff territory. I won't say too much more about it, but I will put this here. I'll find a way! No matter what! The entire town of Snowmanton is currently gearing up for a snowman building competition, because I guess irony is just that much of a bitch in this town. But I will say, maybe it would help your chances of winning if your snow actually looked like snow. Like, you can literally see the fabric blowing in the wind. At least it matches the ground. But I guess all the fake snow didn't stop the fake snowman from committing another murder. Because of this incident, Sam is pretty skeptical about whether or not Jack Frost actually died in the accident, so he calls this dude named Agent Manners, an FBI agent who is trying to track down Jack, who tries to quell Sam's fears. And I need to know that Jack Frost is really dead. Oh yeah, Sheriff, Jack Frost did indeed die in the accident, then I can assure you. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the house, it seems that there's a clearly fake-looking snowman sitting on the front lawn that the sheriff's son Ryan claims he didn't make. Well, at least he's nice enough to give it a face. Well, after referencing an oven mitt. Kid, do you not know what a snowman looks like? But the neighbor's kid, Billy, decides that he wants to be our obligatory bully in this movie, and he claims that the snowman is blocking their sledding path, even though they're clearly able to sled without moving him. Ryan gets blamed for Billy's death pretty much exactly like in Child's Play, except in that movie, Andy being framed for the murder was actually a pretty big part of the story, but here it never gets brought up again in the entire movie and is incredibly pointless. But hey, at least we get to see Billy's dad chew the scenery like bubblegum. Do not be forsaking the Lord's name in my house, little girl! 
He goes outside to have a cigarette so we can finally have a look at our frozen serial killer and let's just say that my ball sack with a face drawn on it looks more like a snowman than whatever is going on here. Say, pal, how about a smoke? <laughs> for a smoke. <laughs> oh, that pun was a special kind of bad. So after showing off his awful axe skills, he then goes inside to kill the wife alongside... Spongebob music? I mean, it's just an odd choice for a murder scene, although it does make me want to put that kind of music in other horror movies. So the cops come by the crime scene and Agent Manners and this dude named Stone investigate a wet spot on the floor and after sticking his little glow stick in it, they discover a shocking revelation. It can freeze and unfreeze at will. It melted, came through the doggy door, and refroze on the inside. Well, wait a minute, what about his eyes and nose? Can they melt too? We clearly have to see him put on his face again, but sometimes he already has them on, or is it like... Who gives a shit? Damn it, she's right. So the sheriff states a curfew and has most of the town stay in this church, I think? I don't know. And while that's going on, Jill and Tommy decide to break into the sheriff's house to have sex. You might be asking yourself why this is happening, and congratulations, you're thinking about this more than the writer did. I don't know about this. I don't think it's such a good idea. Come on. You want me to have fun, don't you? Yeah, come on, let's fuck in the spot where my brother died. He sends his condolences. While Jill dries her hair in her not bedroom, Tommy is trying to get both of them drinks, but it seems that a third wheel wants to join in on the squatting party. Look, uh, I'm not, I'm not a burglar. No, I'm not a burglar. I just broke into your house to steal your champagne. Tommy tries to fight back against Jack, but he retaliates with awful one-liners that don't really make a lot of sense. Ah! Oh! Well, what do you know? Armed and dangerous. Oh. Bottom of the night, four dead here. After disposing of Tommy, Jack goes upstairs to take care of the other home invader in probably the scene that this movie is most well known for, and don't worry, it's for the wrong reason. He rises from the bathtub with Jill in his arm and then he, uh, rapes her. Do you think I want rape in my Christmas movies? I don't want rape in my Christmas movies. Like, that idea is something I would be concerned with if you brought it up during the writing process, let alone making it into the final cut of the movie. I'm not gonna show it, even though it really doesn't show anything, but that doesn't make it any less festive. Alright, moving on. So back at the sheriff's department, Sam and Manners are discussing fighting back against the evil snowman when an empty squad car pulls up. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's a shitty snowman. <laughs> Manners tries to shoot him, but apparently Snow is fucking bulletproof now and it does nothing against him. Made in America! He backs them into the police station before trying to liquidate himself inside the building from under the door. Alright, stand clear. Damn it, it's not working! Yes, Manners, because if shooting the snowman's head off didn't do anything, then surely shooting a puddle will. Dumbass! <laughs> They decide to fill the room with cleaning supplies in an attempt to burn Jack alive, even though that's not how cleaning supplies work. So after a really long and tedious scene where Sam has to get the keys out of the door to open the window... Sam, just fucking grab it. You're making this so much harder than it needs to be. They finally escape and light the place up. Hope somebody remember to put out the cat. Oh, sorry, they're just so different. But it seems that blowing up the place isn't quite enough to keep this Muppet reject down. Look, Ma! I'm a Picasso! 
You know, I kind of love this moment because it's like the music composer was just as disappointed in that joke as we are. For some reason, they decided to just sit around for a while and discuss how Jack came to be, even though he's literally right outside as Stone discusses the experiments he was working on before the whole acid fiasco happened. I created an acid that would bond a human chromosome helix with an inert material so that we could be resurrected in our future. It means that the soul exists. And it's not just some esoteric spiritual entity or even a vague electrical force. The soul is a chemical. So they come up with a plan to trap Jack in the furnace below the church. So they stand guard and wait for him to come to them. You know, I think it's really impressive that they couldn't manage to make a simple ball look at least a little bit like snow. Like, that's gotta take some amount of effort. They use hair dryers to push back the snowman without any actual movement, and they somehow trap Jack in the furnace. So yeah, it seems that Jack has finally met his end- oh, just kidding, this wouldn't be a Child's Play ripoff without at least two more fakeouts as Jack uses the magic of condensation to escape. Blow me. He then somehow possesses Stone just to walk two feet outside and then decides to go back to being a snowman. Don't eat yellow snow. You know, every single time that this motherfucker makes a pun, it makes me appreciate the Mr. Freeze puns in Batman and Robin. That's an unforgivable sin movie, you've crossed the line. Jack tries to get inside the car to kill Sam and Ryan, but they escape through the window because Jack kind of sucks at killing people if you couldn't tell. Sam throws this bag of oatmeal that Ryan made in his face, which actually hurts him, but how could that be? What did you put in the oats? Anti-freeze. <sighs> Just a word of the wise, kids. If you're going into your garage for cooking ingredients, you're doing it wrong. Jack, just because you say words doesn't make it a one-liner. You need to be clever. There needs to involve wordplay. So they come up with a plan to kill Jack using the antifreeze, so Sam lures him into an apartment building with some very odd-sounding guests. <laughs> it's my husband. But it seems that Jack has finally got the jump on Sam, but instead of just fucking killing him, he decides to slowly stab him while saying more shitty one-liners. Listen, uh, I got a point I'd like to make! Uh, <laughs> But of course they triumph as Sam pushes the fake snowman costume into a truck filled with antifreeze and after another fake out with his arm attacking Ryan and practically swimming in the liquid poison, they bury all the containers of antifreeze to keep Jack at bay and the movie finally ends with Jack singing Silent Night. Uh. That was Jack Frost, what the hell did I just watch? This movie's bad. Like, really bad. I would say it's so bad it's good, but to be honest, it's not even that. The effects are awful, the acting is only passable, the plot is stolen from Child's Play, it's pretty problematic, takes itself way too seriously, and doesn't even have at least cool kills to give me something to look at. They are either just close up so you can't see anything, or flat out just don't show the kill. Like, that's the one thing I should be able to look forward to, and they're just lame. I know there really aren't that many choices for Christmas horror movies, but even if this is your only option, I still say give it a pass. But thank you everybody so much for watching, and if you'll excuse me, I have to go try to get tickets for Spider-Man No Way Home.